This video deals with pen tablets such as Wacom tablets and Topaz Impression. In general there's no great application for pen tablet use in Impression. Uh, no, there's no brush varieties, no painting module, and you must work around these limitations as demonstrated further on in this video. Photoshop and other painting programs have the tools, controls, etc. Nonetheless, a paint pen tablet may be useful in adding pre-painting sketch effects, uh, which we'll demonstrate here also, or when creating a mask with a brush, and that's no different than any other program. So instead of using your uh, mouse to paint with the brush in a mask uh, in Topaz Studio 2, you would uh, invoke the mask and just use your pen tool. I would advise then clicking on the brush size last and that way your uh, bracket keys should again work just like in Photoshop or with a mouse to uh, change the brush size. So this will be a quick demonstration of just using the pen tablet as a masking brush device. A very simple and just like you would make any mask. Here I had my eagle picture. I'm adding a texture that's a picture behind it and I want to add a mask. So I click on this icon here. A mask pops up. I select the brush and then I want to uh, set my radius and softness and uh, then I want to make sure that the last thing I click over here is the radius uh, to set it <coughs> as what will be affected by the bracket keys. Uh, if the last thing you click is the softness, then as you move the bracket keys the softness will be the thing that changes. If it's the transparency, the transparency will change. So the last click you should make is on the radius so that you can switch the size of the radius unless you want something else to be affected by the bracket keys. So then simply start painting uh, and here the only difference is that we're using a pen which might give you better control than a mouse. Some people are very adept with the mouse and some people are very adept with the pen and would rather use a tablet and pen. So here I just fill in everything that I don't want that new background texture to show on uh, with black. Black is concealing this layer of the mountain and lake texture and the bird shows through. And white will reveal the background texture. So if you make a mistake and go outside the margins of the bird or the uh, tree limb and you want to bring back some of that background uh, new mountain texture then you just switch the transparency to white and of course if you want to uh, you can then click on the radius again just to set it so that your bracket keys will affect that. I'm looking over at the mask and going back uh, to the picture itself to fill in any white areas I might have missed within the area I want masked on the bird and uh, changing pen size as needed. I look around also for where I might have uh, exceeded the margins of the bird uh, or missed something and uh, fill in <coughs> uh, with black where I want background hidden and white where I want it revealed again. So you can zoom in uh, and use the navigator uh, in the uh, bottom. You can just click on navigator and uh, slide that box in the navigation panel, navigator panel up so that you can zoom in on a certain area. Here I'm making sure I got all the beak and in doing so I've probably erase part of the mountain so I have to go back and fill that in with white uh, which I just did and then there's areas in the front of the bird that I felt I had missed so I'm filling that in with black 
Same thing on the back, there was uh, a missing area. And so that's how uh, you use tablet and pen to affect in Topaz Impressions. Otherwise, uh, there's not a whole lot of reason to be using a tablet and pen. Despite my conclusion, I am going to go ahead anyway and show you how some people might use a tablet and pen with impression. Okay, if you don't think you've had enough, wait till you hear this one. How about using a tablet to draw and give it a more rough hand look? Uh, it is possible. I'm using an ancient Wacom bamboo, and uh, I'm not an artist. I can't draw worth beans. Uh, even my stick figures have problems. So that's why I resort to using a program to sketch for me. However, uh, I decided I'd take the challenge a little bit. And what I do is bring in my black and white image, and I put a co color overlay of white on it, take a sec, and um, then I put a mask on that white overlay. And um, so if I turn down, I'm gonna turn down this opacity so that we're able to see through a little bit into the statue uh, and see contours and things like that. And uh, as I said, I, I put a mask on it. In a sec, you can see, in the right side of the panel is the mask. Here's a brush, and I just made that brush radius two with a very hard edge. I just take a few strokes, like so, like I'm sketching. Not that I know what I'm doing here, guys. If you're an artist, I deeply apologize <laughs> for whatever it is I'm doing. And uh, you know, I don't think in studio you can turn the canvas. Uh, but you get your lines going, uh, just go all around the subject and uh, get as many details as you want, as little as you want, and um, you can even put a little shading in to model it if you want. And then once uh, all the drawing is done, just turn your opacity all the way up. Go out to fit it. And there you see we have this sketch. Now what's showing through, remember what a mask does is a white reveals and black reveals. And what the white is revealing is this solid white that we had before we masked. What the black is doing is showing through the underlying image. And so we're going to have to fix that uh, with a curves adjustment layer. Let me actually bring that down and see if we can fix it from the outset. And on this curves adjustment layer, normally your curves adjustment layer is going to look like this and nothing's changed. And what I want to do is bring these gray areas to become more black. And that may be way over here. And uh, that may be all we have to do. If we want to make sure the whites are white, we could drag this over a little bit more, but it doesn't look like we need to worry about that. And then we can uh, put on our first impression, see if that does any good. Uh, it doesn't really do much. Uh, this is just a, a pencil sketch outline. And so what I decided to do is try blurring it first. So I put on a slight Gaussian blur. Let's see if we can bring up the setting I used is uh, 0.39. And I did not turn on Preserve Edge. So now that I've got this sketch blurred, I go into Impressions. And here I chose the pencil sketch, show you my settings. Got a low number of strokes. Turn up the uh, paint opacity a little bit. Stroke width and stroke length. Uh, spill is where it usually is. Um, the brush size at 52. If you go 
like 60 or more, it starts to get too solid. See, that doesn't look attractive to me. So I like it down closer to 50. And uh, we're getting these nice strong lines. If we want, we could put, uh, you know, make a, another copy of curves to darken it further. But I think this is pretty good. So this just gives a more hand sketched look. I'm sure those of you who are better at sketching will do a better job than I. Having done that experiment with the Wacom tablet, one has to wonder, can I just do a freehand sketch and then convert it uh, in Topaz Studio again? I'm not quite sure why one would want to do this, but it was kind of a happy ending for the last one. So let's just uh, try that with this. I've opened a new document uh, that's 17 by 11, kind of a common art pad, sketch pad type size. We have to first duplicate that layer, so Control J or Command J on a Mac, and or you can just click and drag it onto this little plus in a otherwise empty box. I'm just going to do Control J. Otherwise, you'll get a warning from Topaz saying that you're working on the original and not a copy. And the first thing I unfortunately have to do is convert this to black. I could have done that originally, but let's do it here. Color Overlay. Click on the white and then just bring the slider all the way down. And then turn the opacity up to 100%. And now we're going to add another color overlay. This time it's going to be white. And then uh, we put on a mask. So remember with a mask, white reveals, meaning leaving the mask white, reveals the white layer uh, of this current layer here, not the layer below. So if we want to erase some of this to show the black level that's below, we have to paint with black. So I have it turned all the way, uh, the transparency. If you go to the right, it gets whiter, gray in the middle, and then black at this end. And then you just choose your brush size that you want to use. And uh, for the sake of seeing it a little better, I put it at three. I'm going to turn my softness down to one because you know the blurring trick that's going to come already. And then uh, just start channeling Bob Ross. Uh, so you may have your happy little cabin here. You see why I don't draw for a living. And your happy little tree. But let's see how it turns out in the long run. And then of course we have to have the mountains in the background, right? And the happy little stream. That comes down from the mountain and maybe makes it turn by these trees. And maybe a path that comes along. Should probably be using short little art strokes here. And let's experiment a little bit with a soft gray brush that may be a few clouds in the sky. Or blue versus the clouds, just to make it a bit more interesting and see what happens when we convert this into a sketch, which I think we should get on with. So now we're going to add our filter. And you could use uh, 
one of the sketch effects. But uh, first, remember, I said blur it a little bit. And that kind of makes up for our lack of talent, or my lack of talent. You probably have more. And then we come into our filter for impression. Again, you can do this as a look, or you can do it here. And if we don't like the outcome, we can change the underlying blur. Let's see. I think I said leave that there. I think we want to try low strokes maybe. And uh, I think I'm going to make the stroke rotation. I don't know that I like it vertical like this. I think I want to make it uh, maybe a 45. And maybe turn on rotation variation. And uh, perhaps up the width a bit length. I think I am going to go back to a high number of strokes, see what happens. But that's another way we can do it. Let's see if we made it more of a thick stroke. Heavier stroke, heavier brush. And I think I'm going to go back to this blur, turn it up a little bit more, and see if it does anything for us. Interesting. But you get the idea. This is what you would play with. Uh, so whether you're doing a black and white sketch or a color sketch, a painting over it, whatever, you can start out with a Wacom tablet sketch of your own. If you've got the talent, uh, then you can come up with something on your own. I'm going to pause this for a second, see if I can find some better settings. Oh, we'll just call that uh, as good as it's probably going to be for now. I'm not trying to win an art prize here. I'm just trying to demonstrate a possibility. So again, the trick is to uh, apply a curves layer afterwards. Get your whites where you want them. Get your black level perhaps up higher. Maybe that white should stay off to this side. And you can see uh, that you can manipulate it quite a bit, uh, hopefully to get an effect that you like. And now that that's <coughs> about where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to, I can always come back to my color overlay, click on the mask, and if I want to add uh, some more detail, I can come back in. It might be better to shut off the other layers while I do that to speed things up, but you get the idea. You can continue to edit. Uh, I'll put a happy little window in the happy little cabin. And all those other effects piled on top, the blur and the impression and the curves are going to apply to all those new strokes. There is one potential application of using the pen tablet with Topaz Studio that I can think of off the top of my head, and that's adding some degree of outline to another impression, such as a watercolor like this. Uh, again, I've probably mentioned it before, but um, many watercolor artists do 
lay down an outline in uh, either paint or ink or pencil before they go on to apply their watercolors. So that often shows through in the painting. So let's try it here. Uh, I'm going to try a couple of different methods, but let's start with this one. I can always cut it out of the video if it doesn't work. So I'm putting on a white color overlay and we'll put it at about 50%. And what I'm going to do is paint with uh, pen on uh, by making a mask. So add a mask by clicking on this mask icon and get your brush tool and set your radius as fine as you, you want. I'm going to have it with a little bit of hardness there. And I can just kind of trace over a couple of the key places that help define the shape of this building as one might do some short strokes to. And you're probably going to say, what are you doing? You have white instead of black. But we can change all that. And so maybe he's defining a few little shrubs. And you can see what we're pursuing in the mask itself here. Uh, but let's bring that color all the way up. And what I want to do is go into the color overlay properties again by clicking on color overlay. Change it to black. Say OK. And then go to the mask again. And then say invert. And now you see the heavy black outline here. Uh, but we can make that more subtle. And then instead of having a computer generated outline, you can have a pen and ink uh, hand drawn outline. And we can take this further and add the impression to it. So here I've added a quick sketch and modified a bunch of settings. Uh, I also changed the blend mode of Quick Sketch to Color Burn, and it's only at 22% opacity. Same thing with the color overlay. So what I did here is added a Quick Sketch and modified it. I changed the uh, blend mode to Color Burn and lowered the opacity to 22, and that gives this uh, overall sketchy line outline like one might lay down. But uh, without the color overlay, you wouldn't see the lines of, of the gross outline. So that's what we achieved with the hand-drawn outline. That I also changed to a color burn a blend mode at 22%. So uh, that's how I ended up with this uh, watercolor-ish <laughs> impression. Uh, I'd probably add one more texture like color burst. So just to finish this off, I added a couple of other textures, color burst and chamois glaze at partial opacities just to give it a little more modeled and warmer appearance. So, uh, you know, you could painstakingly go in and, and trace the outlines of all these uh, posts and beams. Um, again, I would probably think you have better control in Photoshop from coming up with uh, such an image to overlay on your uh, watercolor and use an appropriate blend mode. Uh, it would be interesting if Topaz Labs decides to add a brush uh, module to Topaz Studio 2 uh, and allow one to import some brushes or create more brushes and come stocked with a few that seem appropriate to the fact that 
uh, Topaz Studio is often a painting program and sketching program uh, that it should have a variety of brushes and uh, pencils and media. And with that uh, brush module also have the ability to draw straight lines by uh, either defining a couple of points and having it fill like a pen or uh, being able to press a shift bar or something like that. So here's uh, what I ended up with with my crude sketching. As I've mentioned multiple times, I am not a sketch artist, otherwise I'd just be drawing. So uh, I'm going to shut off this layer and show you a couple of reasons that I would rather, if I could draw, use uh, Photoshop or some other drawing program, Corel Draw or whatever, instead. And one of the very important ones is the brush tool that I can change my brush uh, not only in its softness, hardness, and size, but I can get different effects, uh, different kinds of brushes that may help, especially somebody who knows what they're doing. So uh, this pencil uh, effect, and as you may be able to see, depending on how hard I press, my tablet, I get different effects. And the control just seems to be better. If I change the size of that brush, you can maybe see the difference. And, you know, it gives a much more realistic pencil stroke. or charcoal type stroke. The other thing you can do is you can rotate the canvas uh, to make it easier to draw. Be back to brush, so you just press the R key and you can rotate the canvas whichever way makes it easier for you to draw. And then press the B key to brush again. The bracket keys to change the size. So those are just a couple of tricks that I, I think are helpful. And to draw a straight line, you just hold the shift key. See, I could have drawn my happy little barn much easier having controls like that. And you can see already that the happy little cabin looks structurally more inviting. Uh, and I, again, I was able to make these straight lines by using the shift key. By rotating the canvas, I was able to do the same thing here because uh, the shift key gives you horizontal or vertical on your screen, uh, so you have to rotate your paper. But considerably better look, and the, the lines look uh, much more refined than we when we had to use a mask. Uh, there's also other brushes in here, for example, for grass. Uh, there's a brush, and so we could fill in with grass. Other effects, you can make your own custom brushes. So as I mentioned before, I have one of my own for clouds, and uh, I'm able to put in those clouds and just choose a much lighter brush. Perhaps, and uh, make considerably larger. And because we have a darker paper, these clouds are appearing brighter. And uh, now if we take this into uh, studio and convert it, let's see what happens if it's any happier. And here I just went into looks uh, to make things quicker and used the medium sketch uh, one that I have. And already looking 
uh, reasonably more de decent. Uh, let's try modified DaVinci. So this is a modified DaVinci. Uh, interesting look. Uh, just take DaVinci and put your own modifications in it. I think that's enough folderol for this, but uh, the other thing you could use this for is uh, for sketching an outline uh, to put over um, a watercolor, you know, to have the outline, uh, to do it freehand, and it just makes it look more realistic than choosing one of the outline modes that uh, I have to use with my lack of talent. But who knows, I may have inspired myself to try some freehand sketching uh, to use for those effects.